That's right, that's right, episode 168, and it is 2019, January 2nd. UFO Buster Radio is back on the line, and uh, second day of the year, and we're going to start with an episode about the legacy incident, uh, incident. <laughs> fuck my life already, Rendlesham Forest, for you guys who love it, who love listening about these legacy incidents that, um, let's be honest, the reason why they're legacy incidents is because they took us 4.2 far, nowhere. But before we get into this article, because it has questions for people to think about, let's get into the fact that we have all kinds of shit in space right now. The biggest thing, let me tell you, New Year's Day, I was like, I was on my phone, social media, looking for news on this, uh, what is it, Ultima Thole, the so-called farthest farthest object ever uh, pictured by man, or some bullshit like that. I mean, this was bigger than freaking uh, Avengers, the film, you know, with Thanos, where he snaps the finger and everybody, half the people disappear. It was bigger than that. And I was ready to see some significant images. Like, damn, show me that rock. What's behind curtain number one? All I get is a blurry-ass image. What, What kind of fucking camera do they put on these things? I read somewhere it's going to take a few months even to get all the data from what it took uh, back yesterday. Because it's over 4 billion miles away, and it only has a 5-watt transmitter. 5 watts? Are you serious? What the fuck can you do with 5 watts? Apparently, not much, because it takes forever for the shit to get here. So, and in usual fashion, basically NASA's got to do this uh, whole composite image thing and piece the shit together so to give us an image, basically, is what's going to happen, I'm sure. But in the meantime, we have these artist renditions of a, a bowling pin in space that's about 20-some-odd miles long. Where the fuck is the excitement in that? Like, I like I really, it ruined my New Year, to be honest, NASA. That was, like, some really shitty stuff to do. Really fucked up. Nobody wants to see that kind of shit. Seriously. I mean, you people are sending fucking spacecrafts up there with uh, which worse quality camera images in these pictures than the damn flip phone flip phones we had over a decade ago what kind of shit is that it's just you just can't write this stuff i can't it's so disappointing so totally disappointing i can't i just don't know what to do anymore it's just horrible and really am i the only one who feels this way am i the only one who feels that this was a complete letdown. So what? The damn thing is is in the Kuiper belt. This, who fucking cares? I mean, they can fucking just uh, one day drop every single image in a Kuiper belt of every single damn thing out there. But if they all look like that, nobody gives a shit. I could have sent you a blurry picture of a finger and said it was in a Kuiper belt. It just feels like the usual rubber dicking from the people at NASA. And they should have a commercial. Every time that they make an announcement like this, it should say some kind of commercial or, or a pre-roll or a mid-roll that says brought to you by the fuckers at NASA. That's all you can do. They're the poster child for letting people down. They let me down. There was, I mean, I, listen, I know I was a fucking rock. I get it. It was a rock in the middle of space. But geez, Louise, give me something that's worth looking at. Not, not that nonsense. Okay, I think I'm good now. And there's more bullshit to come. I mean, people are saying 2019 is going to be either Mars or NASA reaching, reaching deep space with craziness. Those are apparently going to be the news topics that are going to be uh, taking over the news. There's nothing out there that says that UFOs and aliens are going to be a predominant in news media at all. And in some ways, I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for that because you just don't know what the hell's going to come out. They could really fuck things up for everyone. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. 
The news for today brought to you by the people who give a shit. The people who give a shit about legacy UFO incidents who uh, 38, almost 39 years later are still trying to start shit about Rendlesham Forest. The link is in the description for you guys who want to read the whole article. But I'm just going to go over the premise because that's what UFO Buster Radio, UFO News is about. I give you a quick synopsis. I give you the cliff notes. And then if you feel like you care two fucks either way, you actually go in and you check it out. You read it. I'm not sure that anyone should really care about this story, to be honest. And not because of what it's talking about. Because there's fucked up people everywhere. But it's because it's Rendlesham. Enough people have written books about this, you know. Colonel this, General that, Captain that. And still, these are the people that early on in ufology, people surmised that these were the credible witnesses that would be able to accurately report on UFO incidents and not be questioned. And all people have ever done is question the Rendlesham incident of 1980. Constantly, all the time. And it's gotten to the point now, it's over almost, we check over three decades, it's almost four decades of questioning this story to the point where no one gives a shit about Rendlesham. And really, in a lot of ways, no one should. We shouldn't We shouldn't just continue to, uh, you know, fuck around with Rendlesham. Anyway, here's the uh, news article. It says, was UK's most notorious UFO incident citing a revenge prank played on the U.S. airmen by SAS commandos? Wow, really? Special Air Service... Commandos apparently uh, on the regular would uh, go into RAF uh, Woodbridge and, you know, they'd uh, land there, yeah, you know, parachute in or do some kind of crazy shit. Apparently one day the U.S. servicemen uh, kind of took offense to that. And this is according to Dr. David Clark, who's a researcher at the Sheffield Holland University. Apparently, this guy at one time managed the Britain's National UFO Sightings Archive. And he says that um, he thinks that some guy that uh, claims to be a former SAS commando by the name of Frank, and that should tell you everything right there. That should pretty much just seal the fate of this story right from the beginning. If Bunny Ears air quotes Frank, Can't give us his full name, his rank, and when exactly he was involved in this Rendlesham incident. That no one should really give two fucks about Frank or uh, Dr. Clark either, for that for that matter. (laughs) Fuck Dr. Clark. Well, according to Frank, what happened here is that back in August 1980, when the British SAS commandos made a practice landing inside the base, uh, apparently the airmen that were there, the U.S. airmen, uh, took offense to that. And they basically, they uh, took these guys, isolated them, and did all kinds of shit to them. But they were apparently continually, continuously referring to them as unidentified aliens. They pretty much interrogated them like they didn't know who the fuck they were, right? Who the hell is going to come in and land on your base if it isn't some kind of an ally? Uh, because, I mean, it's not about the U.S. base. You're, you're pretty much... You're pretty much in a, in a different country. That wasn't the United States you landed into. So uh, I don't think it was going to be another country besides uh, the UK. So I, I, I don't know. It seems to be that maybe some people were pissed off that they kept on doing this. And they probably did it to each other all the damn time. Who knows? Who freaking knows? But the deal is that uh, apparently... And these guys were uh, hauled off and interrogated. They were mauled. They were prob- probably probed. But, they, you know, they're trained for that. Commandos are, are trained for probing. And that's why they only give out only the most uh, important identification information. You know, like in the U.S., you give out your social security number. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Duh. Yes, your name and rank. <laughs> uh, so what? I just said that. Anyway, after their release, according to Dr. Clark, the... Uh, 
the uh, these SAS commandos did not complain about the treatment, but instead, because they were constantly being referred to as aliens, they decided they would get revenge. They would get revenge on the U.S. airmen, and uh, no fucks given, they are going to uh, take it to them, because 1980, December, around Christmas time, they decided to unleash the prank on the uh, U.S. airmen, and um, so some of the things that they did, they apparently created some things uh, out of the shit they had around the base, right? So uh, remote control kites, helium balloons, and colored flares, and they launched them into the area around the base. Listen, if anyone could pull that kind of a prank off, it would be someone that had the skills of of an SAS commando. But my question to you is this, and I've said this before, who gives a flying fuck about Rendlesham Forest? Haven't some of these people already made enough money on videos, on books, on interviews, about something that's heading towards the four-decade mark? Fuck, I tend to agree with the people that say that we need to pay attention to Mars. We need to pay attention to the shit that's being discovered by NASA. And not just NASA, as a matter of fact, by China and all these other countries that are heading into space. Maybe that's where we need to focus on. Because the truth is that the majority of the people of the world are not going to give two fucks about E.T. Not one bit. Until someone in authority tells them that they found an amoeba on some other planet in our solar system. That's when fuckers are going to care. Right? That's when they're going to lose their damn minds. Because if you can find an amoeba on Enceladus, if you can find an amoeba on something floating around in a Kuiper belt, well, shit, you that's pay dirt. You finally answered the age-old question, are we alone? No, no, fuckers, we are not alone. There's an amoeba on another meteor. Then and only then would the majority of the people of the world ask more questions. Right now, we're too busy in our daily lives to give two fucks about some rich guy going to Mars. And we're too busy in our daily lives to give a damn about somebody getting probed in Arkansas. That's just the way it is. But we will continue to have these discussions here at UFO Buster Radio because it's got to lead to somewhere. And unfortunately, people are not going to listen to any experiencers. Unless there's solid, solid evidence. And when there is solid evidence, what's the chances that experiencer is going to disappear permanently? It's a fucked up catch 22, I know. But anyway, Happy New Year to all of you guys. Don't forget to follow me on social media. The links are in the description. Check out this article. Uh, read the rest of it. It might be something you might be uh, you might be into. You want to argue about. If you think this is a possibility, send me a DM. Let me know what you think. Is it possible that the uh, British SAS, these commandos, pulled off the prank of the century? Because shit, that was a good fucking prank to be forty years later and people not know that it that. It was a joke. It was a joke. Don't don't get upset about it. Don't write books about it. Don't go have interviews about it. It was a joke. This is UFO Buster Radio. Man, we're working. I'm checking out. Don't forget to share, follow, and like. Uh, I'll check you guys out tomorrow.